you have to do what you can do to fight what is bad, and you also have to laugh. Otherwise, the bad guys win. That's a very big lesson in my life. If I despair, the bad guys win. I'm a big believer in that. So uh, I really, I couldn't think of a better detour from sadness than having people I adore on with the 50th anniversary of one of the truly iconic American films, Airplane. And I have all three. Are you the three writers? Are you? Is that is that the title? Writers yeah. and directors. And directors. That's that's fascinating. That's a lot. That's a lot. The so the the you know you three, and I'll say who these three are in a moment. You three are as iconic as your movie. <laughs> I just just wanted to say that. The three are the Zucker brothers, David and Jerry Zucker, and Jim Abrams. The three of them. You guys got together originally in Milwaukee. Was that true? Right. All, all of you are from Milwaukee. We were all from Milwaukee, and by you coincidence, want to go, 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 uh, yeah. Jerry and I were brothers, and uh, we <laughs> were uh, at the time. Were. Yeah, yeah. We were, I yeah, see. At the time, uh, you, we outgrew that. Nothing lasts forever. So, uh, and we got together with Jim Abrams, and the Abrams family and the Zucker family were really close friends. Our fathers were business partners in Abrahams and Zucker Real Estate. And no kidding. Our mothers yeah. were close. Our sisters were college roommates. And uh, so the Abrams family used to come over for dinner. And then Jim and Jerry and I uh, would end up in our basement rec room playing ping pong and, and you know, joking. <laughs> so uh, did all three of you think of each other as funny? Yeah. Yes, you did. Yeah. All three of yeah, you. Yeah. Yeah. Who's the funniest? Jim. I am. <laughs> no, you know, it's uh, uh interesting thing is... Wait a minute, wait. I just want yeah. for the record to be noted. Jerry said Jim, and David said he is. Yeah. That David is. Yeah. Yeah. I just, just for the record, I just thought people I, should know that. I, I Jim, knew, wait, Jim didn't even answer the question. Well, I think we Jim, know what he has that? to say now. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> I see. By the way, so they have, they have a book out. When did it come out, guys? October 3rd. God. You really picked the, a bad week. Yeah. <laughs> to quit smoking. Yeah, but but it, it's, it's, so, it's so worthy of, of all of your having. We, we need this in life more than ever. Surely you can't be serious. The true story of Airplane. David Zucker, Jim Abrams, Jerry Zucker. <coughs> And it's uh, the beauty is it's filled with illustrations. I mean, it, yeah, we it's, wrote it with you in mind, Dennis. Yeah, yeah. I have no <laughs> doubt of about pictures, that. I'm sure you. Were yeah, able no, to no, get the pictures are helpful. Yeah, That's yeah. entirely yeah. accurate. I, I expected. It's important. Yeah, it's go. important to read on the back next to the pricing label. There's a there's a. I don't in, know. In if the you back can cover. See. Here. In the back cover. Right, right here. Oh yeah, go on. Best if oh read. that is hilarious. Best, Isn't that funny? Best if read by, like you, best if used <laughs> by. Food. Right, like a food. March 2035. <laughs> we're, we're giving people a lot of time. Yeah. So there's yeah. like, e- even that, e- even the the barcode is funny. <laughs> I, I'd say this, if the barcode is funny, people should get the book. Yeah. I mean, that, that pretty much uh, uh, summarizes it. Is there, I know this is a, an absurd question but i'll ask it anyway uh because by definition you sort of can't answer it but i i do mean it seriously how much did you forget it is 50 years well that's why it was a good thing to have three of us because we we did forget a lot and there were certain things that one of us would say oh this this thing happened don't you remember and the other two would say no you know and there are also times when we would have conflicting memories but but then we you know kind of finally said oh yeah yeah no it did happen this way and, and it's an oral history so uh, actors are contributing crew even studio executives and they're telling stories that we never knew before oh i see so that that worked out on, yeah. on the and often issue. they're hilarious stories and we and, had no idea. If yeah. there was ever a doubt, we always went with the version that made us look, look best. Better. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, no, uh, no, knowing David. Yeah, right. Yes. <laughs> yes, it's quite, yeah. I wasn't quite the genius behind the whole thing, but, you know, I mean, whatever you, uh, you know, take from the book is up to you. Whose idea was Airplane? It, it, it's, three, it's just the three, the three of us did it. Really? It, it happened, so it wasn't, it wasn't like one day, oh, let's do Airplane. We, ha we <clears throat> um, when we were doing the theater, uh, we used to uh, record these late night movies because the commercials between these old late night movies were funny and we could spoof them and, and use them. And we're looking at all these commercials and we see this a movie between them called Zero Hour. And it was basically the plot of Airplane. We actually bought the rights to it. And <clears throat> we said, wait a minute, this would make a great comedy. Well, it's does certainly, that, uh, uh, Jim, Jim, that, go ahead. Yeah, there's a line in Zero Hour, kind of the iconic line that says, we need to find someone back there who not only can fly this plane, but who didn't have fish for dinner. <laughs> we just uh -huh. take that literally from the, yeah. from the Zero Hours and put it in an airplane. How long did it take you to write and direct and produce it? The first version we wrote took about a year, and then we tried to get financing for it. We couldn't do it, and so uh, John Landis, who saw the show, suggested that why don't you do a movie based on your show? So we did Kentucky Fried Movie, right? Uh, sketches, I, right. and that turned out to be a good thing because we actually learned how to direct by watching John on the set. And then we went back, rewrote the airplane script. And then we started to uh, take it around to studios. Again, turned down by everyone except for one one guy, the president of Paramount, uh, whose name was Michael Eisner. And he said, well, maybe this could be a good idea. <laughs> and so he had us in the studio for a meeting, and we, we were at Paramount. But that was <laughs> years. <clears throat> that took years this, before this we finally got to Paramount. Yeah. It took years. For five years. Yeah. It was five you years. You had a script for five years. Yes. A script that turned into one of the most successful movies ever made, and nobody would, would touch it. What yeah. did they ever give a reason? They did, it's not funny, guys. It, 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 you know, you have what? to understand. You can see a movie that's great or terrible, and you say, "Why did the studio do this or not do this?" But it, it's it's much harder to tell at the beginning when you're just looking at a script and and the cast and and of course nobody got the idea of of casting, you know, casting this with straight actors and who would pretend that they didn't even know they were in a comedy and 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 that was a really hard thing for studios to understand and that was our driving uh, principle uh, that's why we loved why we insisted on directing it uh, because we we wanted that the the way we were going to play it and but it's in general there are, there's tons of movies in Hollywood that people are surprised uh, that did great or surprised that failed. It's it's not easy. Were you confident it would succeed? Yeah, we the, were. Every, all yeah. three of you? Yeah. All three of every minute. So were you frustrated for five years? I, I was the most frustrated. Is that true? Yeah, we and they t Jerry Jerry and Jim talk about it in the book where I kept trying to hang myself or whatever, you know, because we were rejected. Uh, 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 unsuccessfully. And, yeah. and Jerry and Jim are saying, well, you know, look, Jim was living on the beach and Jerry was having fun doing the theater. <laughs> but uh, Well, I, what did you do for an income for five years? We ran the theater. We had Kentucky Fried Theater. And, and was that here or Milwaukee? That was in here. Los Angeles on Pico Boulevard. And we did a show called My Nose. And we called it that because so our LA Times weekly calendar listing read, My Nose runs continuously. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> After three years... Did it occur to any of you this may never be a movie? No, not no. We we didn't. We we thought we just thought people didn't understand it one thing or another. But we're going to do it because we knew it was like you know we had machine guns in the Civil War. We were we had we had the goods. We had something that was so new and different, and we believed it was going to be funny and it was going to be successful. And that's why people ask us, were you surprised when it was a hit? Well, we weren't because we kept. Telling, trying to convince people this is going to be a big hit. What was surprising is All right, that... tell us in a moment. Okay. I, I want to tell everybody. The book is up at DennisPrager.com. 
We're taking a break from the world news. Surely You Can't Be Serious is the name of the book about airplane. They say Jerry Zucker, nothing <laughs> happens. I just want you to know that. I, I don't. I'm not so sure yeah. about that. Oh, Try that's it. a good point. Well, after okay. this book, no. then maybe yeah. people sit up and listen. <laughs> yeah. Dial pal two five zero. Say Dennis Prager and save a lot on your phone bill. Uh, I decided that we need a break from the the darkness of uh, the world, and I can't think of a better one. I know the Zucker brothers many years. I adore them, uh, and. Uh, it's it's a, it's really a joy to have you. I don't know Jim as well. Jim Abrams, Jerry Zucker, David Zucker, they both wrote and directed the film. It took them five years. So he, when I say the film, so every one of your generation, my generation, knows Airplane. I mean, I, I, it's maybe the most famous film uh, of the last 50 years. Uh, there is an argument to be made. Uh, you, you don't even have to assent or or, or, or different. What but, would you say, well, Alan? It, it's, it's definitely up there. It's, I mean, you know, Godfather, a few other. Oh yeah, Godfather. Okay, yeah, that's but, fair. No, no, no. You're right. That's true. Which was hilarious. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah. I, Godfather's. You know, you're just rolling in the aisle during yeah. Godfather. Yeah, about comedy. But on yeah. comedy, certainly, you, yes. You know, when when uh, the studio wanted to do a sequel to Airplane, and we really didn't want to do another movie in an airplane, but then we thought, what if we do Airplane to The Godfather? <laughs> we really pitched that to Paramount. And, 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 you know, the idea is Bob and Julie come home from having, you know, landed this plane and, and uh, done a great thing, and their family is like, the, the mafia, you know, and and then we do a whole well, Godfather thing. That's a great thing. idea. The they Paramount loved it. Really? Wanted to do it. Yeah. Francis Coppola said no. Oh. And, and they oh. had to ask the book. Well, it's, I, I have to there. admit, I understand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, have to say, yeah. I have some sympathy for his, for yeah. his viewpoint yeah, But he that. wanted to do Godfather 3. So yeah. we say in the book, you know, everyone probably would have been better off had we done Airplane 2, The Godfather. Uh-huh. Yeah. A given, given Godfather yeah, 3. Right. I see. So, the again, it took five years to finally sell it. Was it an instant hit? Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah. It isn't. It wasn't yeah. something that like uh, over time well, caught in on. Those, well, in those days, uh, movies didn't open at uh, fifty million or twenty million in, in, in dollars, and um, it 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 opened well, and then it just kept it kept going, you know, and and uh, ended up to be. I think it was the second highest grossing film of the year. Well, but uh, domestic and international combined, it was uh, on its first release was a hundred and sixty million. Eighty. Interesting. Hey, go ahead, Jim. <laughs> oh no, I, Wait, Jim is Jim is breaking up, guys. I'm, for, I'm sorry to say. It. Even Paramount. Are you, are you hearing me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Even Paramount. Even though they greenlit the picture and we started shooting, they weren't sure of what they had. And the first day's dailies was actually a scene, a couple scenes from the cockpit, where Leslie Nielsen says, I am serious and don't call me Shirley. And really, it wasn't until they actually saw that scene filmed with a serious actor that Paramount really got what we were doing, and at first people were reluctant to come to dailies, but as the shooting progressed, more and more people came and were told that, you know, you could barely get a, a, a seat in dailies as the <laughs> filming progressed because everybody wanted to see it. So it even took them, the financiers of the movie, a while to understand exactly what we were doing. How long, so in those days, it's so funny for us to say, in those days, because we were all alive in those days. Yeah. But all right, in those days, uh, what I recall, which and I, I know the least of all the people in this room about movies, but the movie, a movie would come out, and I remember, I grew up in Brooklyn, and there was a, a, a theater near our house, and my mother would say, "If you want to see this movie, you better see it now, because mm -hmm. in two weeks it's gone." That's the way it worked. Yeah. Is that the way it worked, including with Airplane? Yeah. Did it stay in theaters? There was, uh, they would do an initial release, and then they would do a secondary release maybe five months later, which didn't do 
uh, n- never did a, a, a lot of money, but that was it until it came out on video cassette. And which was how many years later? When did that did video cassettes come in? I can't. Uh, well, they they had them at, with Airplane, but it was a year later. But Airplane oh. kept playing. I mean, if a movie did well. It kept playing week after week. Oh, so that's theaters. what I'm asking. Right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so yours did. Well, ours yeah. did. We stayed because, you know, the studios had what they called 90-10 deals. Was it 90% not... for the theaters the first week and then it, it kept it, playing? No, 90% for the studios uh, the and first 10% week, yeah. for the studios. But I don't know yeah. if they had those deals then. I'm not sure. But then as time goes on, it shifts in, favor in the, the theater. theaters. Did so anybody the theaters give little... you a bad review? Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, um oh. Uh, who who was it? To Pauline Kael, uh, gave us a. Yeah. Oh, was that the New Yorker? Yeah, and and said there's not a comedian in the bunch, <laughs> in the whole movie. And in in, that movie. is precious. And in fact, that, that, I'm yeah. sure she regrets right. Yeah. Well, you know, we're big fans of Woody Allen, and I I actually had the privilege of meeting him in New York back in the uh, mid '80s, and I, I ran into him at a Knicks game, and so. I kind of gushed about how we loved his movies and, you know, he was our idol. He, all he wanted to talk about was Airplane. And he said that the first time he saw it, he saw it, he was sitting next to Pauline Kael and she hated it. And Woody Allen's going, no, no, don't you see? This is brilliant. This is great. It's funny. So, and she just said, no, I don't get it. What is this? A bunch of puns. That is, so uh, it's funny. I Talking about Woody Allen and not getting it, I saw one of his great classic early movies i was touring new zealand in my <laughs> in my 20s so i went to the a, a new woody allen movie and i realized after about 20 minutes i was the only person in the theater laughing <laughs> i was so <laughs> self-conscious bananas was it, it might have been bananas mm-hmm. and, and new zealand this was not new zealand humor yeah but Airplane apparently was international. Well, it did cross those lines because everyone worldwide shared the references of those old movies and, and Airliner and Trouble movies, so they got it. Well, to this day, people will say to me as a joke, don't call me Shirley. That is part <laughs> yeah. of the lexicon of the yeah. English yeah. language. Yeah. yeah, and David Letterman says in the book, he says he's driving in New York with his son and uh, and and uh, his son says, "Dad, move over a lane." And Letterman said to his son, uh, "Okay, I'll move over, but don't call me Elaine." <laughs> we'll be back in a moment. The book on airplane, surely you can't be serious, is up at DennisPrager.com. very pleased that these guys just signed a copy to me. Surely you can't be serious. The true story of Airplane. David Zucker, Jim Abrams, and Jerry Zucker. The Zucker brothers and Jim Abrams. Okay, so everybody who has seen the movie has a favorite scene, or two favorite, or three favorite, but favorite. And it's inevitable. So mine might be when what was it? Was it the one of the women passengers was a bit hysterical? Goes hysterical. Goes hysterical because yeah. there's uh, airplane. Uh, what? What is you know turbulence? turbulence right. <laughs> so passengers line up to smack her. <laughs> now to say that that is politically incorrect <laughs> is to give new meaning to the word politically incorrect. So. How did you come up with that idea? They told me to ask you, Jim. Well, <clears throat> it was largely based on many experiences I had myself on airplanes. No, that's not <laughs> Not true, uh-huh, not true, <laughs> not true. <laughs> right. The, uh, there was actually, we patterned, as I think we explained, a lot of the movie from a, a 1957 movie called Zero Hour, and there was a scene in Zero Hour where a woman goes hysterical like that, and they actually push her a little bit, and so we wrote that scene in into uh, Airplane, but just enhanced it some. Yeah, I'll, it, yeah I'm, it, 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 do, it does look enhanced. So yes. in, in Zero Hour, there's they, a couple, just I think the one passenger comes and shakes her and says, 
you know, calm down. It's okay. But we had three people shake her and saying, and then the lady who played this hysterical woman suggested, why don't you have them slap me? And so Jerry and Jim and I said, all right, <laughs> I love her. You know, I uh, love that. She came up with that. That so was they, a, gr- that, so, that did it. So the first yes. th- two slapped her and went on and Leslie Nielsen, when he, he slaps her, and then when he's tapped on the shoulder to say, Doctor, you're wanted up front, he slaps her again before he leaves. <laughs> and I don't know who if Leslie came up with that. Or it was yeah. Leslie. Yeah. I, that was yeah. actually Mel Brooks' favorite joke oh, in the really? movie, oh, he, oh. That, the second slap. Oh, why the didn't, second why slap? didn't you put that in Is, the book? Yeah, oh. why didn't you put yeah. it in the book? I, I, All right, I volume two, the, I, the 50th I, anniversary I, of the book, I, you'll do that. Yeah, I thought it would be socially uh, inappropriate. <laughs> One of, the, no, one of the few things that was improvised in the movie was when we saw how well that worked, we thought, well, wouldn't it be fun to extend the line of people who were waiting to slap the woman? And so we said to the prop guy, do you have any props that these people could? And he ran out to the prop truck and he got a whip and a <laughs> bat and a gun. gun or, yeah. And we extended the line of people who were waiting to hit her. <laughs> That's what I remember. Yeah. Uh, so that's, do you, re, so I, I'm so curious. Do you remember that actress? Yeah. Yeah, Lee. Lee Terry. Lee Terry. No, really? No, 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 no. Lee, no, no, Lee Bryant. Lee Bryant. Lee, Lee Bryant. Bryant. And she, I think she actually did the commercial on TV about Jim never has a second cup of my coffee. <laughs> she was, uh-huh. actually, and we spoofed that, you know, uh, in, 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 in Airplane. Did you get friendly with any of the actors? How do you mean, Dennis? <laughs> I mean that. Uh, uh, certainly, I mean, in those and, days, and, you could and, get away and, with and, that kind and, of thing. Right, and Jerry, but, usually you, you know, you're serious. That's an issue today. No, I'm not being cute. You mean because well, n- why? Why? Why is it? Is, is it a form of harassment that well, you do? Well, no. In general, the whole Me Too movement, and and they're very careful now. Even in a sex scene, they have to have someone. What do they call it? There's some name for someone who has to be on the set and a breast wrangler, so, yeah, <laughs> who supervises or whatever. It's 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 just people are more are much more sensitive to touching, you know, and and so, um, yeah, uh, it, it has, it has, I don't think it's made a huge difference in making a film, it's not like everybody has to, uh-huh. I mean, Hollywood tends to be a very huggy, you know, physical right. group. Well, I, I would think, though, did they enjoy making the film, the actors? Loved it, yeah. Everybody had a good time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, Jim, I have a question. This is really, uh, it's almost gnawing at me. <laughs> humor is very hard or let me put it in better english it is very hard for humor to transcend generations so when we come back i want to know if you guys know how young people react to airplane back in a moment the book is up at dennisprager.com decided we'll leave the darkness of the Middle East and, frankly, much of the world aside and talk about something that can give you a tremendous amount of joy through humor. I had the question right before, how does the younger generation view it? Because it's so hard for humor to transcend generations. And so let, let's deal with that uh, for a moment. Any any thoughts on that? Are young people, and I, I don't even expect them to do it. I just don't know what the answer is. Jim, do you know? Well, <clears throat> I confess that on those days, uh, on YouTube today, you can see a bunch of people watching Airplane for the first time and reacting. Hmm. And <clears throat> I confess that on a day like when I'm not feeling that good about myself, I'll tune in <laughs> some of those channels and watch. And the amazing thing is that the movie holds up as well today as it did 50 years or 43 years ago when, when it was released. And many of the same jokes, people, it's kind of interesting, they'll, they'll say, oh, wait a minute, are we, were you really allowed to smoke on airplanes back then? <laughs> oh, God, then, that's right. Yeah. Oh, the, my God. The, the joke of the smoking ticket and people laugh as hard today as they did back then. So it's, it's kind of, and these people weren't alive when we made the movie. And yet the jokes seem to hold up 
as well as they did all those decades ago. Jerry and David, you you agree with that? Yeah, the the uh, those open luggage compartments that I see in airplanes. <clears throat> they, did they really <clears throat> were they really just open then? We we originally oh that's funny i yeah. didn't realize that and oh there's all kinds of on people's heads. Uh, uh, crazy <laughs> we we we, we uh, actually originally wrote the movie in, to be shot in black and white on a propeller plane because that was what was zero in our hour. mind zero hour and all those old flying movies and uh, uh, thank goodness Michael Eisner at Paramount uh, said, no, if you want to do it here, it's got to be in color on a jet plane because he wanted it to be also... Well, he uh, was right. Uh, he was absolutely yeah. right. No, no, we, and we've thanked and him we say that in the book, many yes. times and in the, and in the book. And, and, but we did get a little bit of, of revenge by putting this, this... If you listen to the, to the film, the sound of the engines are propeller engines not jet oh, engines oh interesting yeah which gives it one of the reasons we didn't really do it for any kind of a tweak we we really did it because that sound was just Drama. more uh, dramatic it it, it, uh, it just felt better to us and uh, and so we did it and some people notice a lot of people don't what was the, the okay go the ahead reason, jim yeah yeah i think one of the reasons that it's held up so well is that we were just doing parody. In other words, we were doing stuff that enabled people to laugh at themselves. And that thought of laughing at yourself is as valuable today as it was back then as it's ever been. And so if you look at most of the jokes, it's like, like, don't call me Shirley. Oh, gosh, I took that line seriously. Shirley, you must be kidding or something. I used to take that seriously. And they point out that that's not worth taking seriously. And I think many of the jokes in the movie are that simple and yet that profound because they get you to laugh at yourself. So uh, Don't Call Me Shirley is based on, I, I, I never remembered the line before it. Shirley, you must be kidding. Shirley, you must be Shirley, kidding. you can't be serious. Shirley, you can't be serious. Don't call me yeah. Shirley. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah. the, the, and someone actually said that line, surely yeah. you can't be serious, in one of the old movies. We, we used to watch old movies, flying movies and others too, and, and we'd, we'd be watching this tape and all of a sudden would say, stop, <laughs> you know, how about putting in this punchline or this visual? And, and it, it really was, you know, it just uh, the idea of, of doing like a movie just the way you see it, only then putting in our punchline or the our old, gag. The old movies always gave us the setup lines or setup uh -huh, moments. Uh -huh. So uh, when the air controller in Zero Hour says, he actually says, looks like I picked the wrong week to quit smoking. And then we just put in the next three, you know, drinking, amphetamines, and finally sniffing glue <laughs> at the end. And so, and it was, that was, and then, there, there were other things. The uh, well, even yeah. the you know the kid coming up to the yeah, cockpit yeah. and Joey, have you ever seen a cockpit before? You know, been in a cockpit before? No, sir, I've never been in an airplane before. That's all from zero hour, and then we just uh, you know added. It. Have you ever seen a grown man sure. naked? Yeah, uh, et cetera. It, 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 zero hour even was we didn't appreciate it at the time, but laid out a perfect story, three act story that we could follow and just hang our jokes on. We mentioned the uh, one of the lines earlier, but the, the old boy gets girl, loses girl, gets girl back is laid out in zero for us too. There's a line at the beginning of zero hour when the girl says, I can't live with a man I don't respect. And for many years, people thought that David wrote that sign, that uh, uh, line based on his uh, relationships with any number of women. <laughs> out that that, that was actually, that was from Zero Hour. Yeah, but that, that's all in the past, Jim. Yeah, it's, really. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and all the, the uh, legal... I'm not saying anything. Settled, uh, I, I know I here, got, I know I, see, I know... I, I know. Sergeant Schultz. <laughs> I know speak. Yeah. <laughs> well... I, one of the reasons I love Airplane is that I love the humor of the absurd. 
that's my favorite uh, humor, uh, where you just take life one uh, step beyond what is what is normal, and and you uh, th- that's one of the uh, the gifts that you guys had. By the way, you both went on, and I I don't know Jim's career as well as I know yours, and I'm ha- happy for Jim to comment on on his own. But I know you you two have gone on to illustrious successes after that as well. Jerry, I had you on for Rat Race, which I, I consider simply hilarious. Uh, I, you're much smarter than I ever even thought. There you go. Right. That was, and that's the giveaway. <laughs> yeah, There's no, exactly. That's, that is, that, that's Jim, right. Jim did a bunch of movies, too. He did the Hot Shots movies. Oh, yeah. cool. So you all went on. Yeah, you, we you, all went on. Yeah. You could have, theoretically, you could have retired, seriously, and... and but you love this. You love making people laugh. Yeah. We, with our final segment, we ought to talk about that because why I think that's so important. The book about the movie is up at DennisPrager.com. So as I've said, we've taken a break from the darkness of the hour in the world. And that leads me to my final questions and the final segment of this really wonderful hour with Jerry Zucker, David Zucker, the Zucker brothers, and Jim Abrams, the authors, the writers, and the directors of Airplane. I keep saying 50th anniversary. It's the 50th anniversary of their coming out to Los Angeles. It's the 43rd anniversary of the film, to be precise, although had places taken it when you started it would be the 48th anniversary <laughs> yeah, right, i mean exactly. just just for the record but it wouldn't but, have been as good a movie no <laughs> and no one would remember that, it that's yeah. interesting no oh that's absolutely true no i'm th- and that's God, thanks to paramount thanks to uh, both paramount definitely but also just every month or week or day whatever we you had would more tinker jokes. with it oh good that was a blessing yeah so he- here is my big question I believe, and and this is, I may be 100% wrong, and that's fine. I always tell guests it's not an issue to differ with me. I believe... That wouldn't be unusual for you. That is correct. I agree with you. (laughs) uh, But I believe the hardest thing to do is make people laugh. It is easy Mm -hmm. to make people cry. Mm -hmm. You just show a kid with cancer in a film and people cry. But to make people laugh, I have to believe that is the hardest. Mm -hmm. Is that a fair assessment? Well, wasn't hard for us because it, it, I think we lived it. We just kind of lived this. We we laughed at ourselves, and so it was natural. Yeah, it, it's it's hard to it's hard to say, but I would I would think so. Yeah, I I uh, um, what was it? Michael Douglas once he was arguing to have for to have a, a comedy director direct some movie, and he. He suddenly, um, he just he screamed at this guy or something that he was that he was talking to, and he said, "Okay, I scared you. Now try to make me laugh." You oh, know, and making right. the point. So that, that is the point. Being, yeah, yes. And and uh, I I actually I mean I always feel it's maybe arrogant, but I I, I think it is it's just a different and uh, a, a talent, and it's something right, which that, you three have. But I'm just saying, I think Jim, go one, ahead. One of the big, I think, and I hopefully we get this across in in the book, but I think w- we all feel incredibly grateful for the blessings in our lives. And one of the blessings in our lives was we had this instinct about not taking things seriously. And we, and all the pieces kind of fell together and we wound up working together and creating the theater and eventually yep. making airplane. But at the heart of it was this very good luck. And a well, you're, luck. you are gifted, and you gave your gift to the world. And I, I thank you, David Zucker, Jerry Zucker, Jim Abrams. Congratulations. The book, the memoir of the great film Airplane, surely you can't be serious. It's up at my website.